Welcome to episode number 3. I'm James and today we are setting up our mobile game with Phaser 3. At the very beginning we are setting up our folder structure which are scenes, prefabs, just a JS script folder, libraries and assets and of course the index.html as the, the entry point. Right now we only need three phaser scenes, the boot scene, the preload scene and the menu scene. And our game assets, we're going to group them into images, audio files and JSON files. And right now I already know that we're also going to need the fontstyles.json file. So I'm creating it right now and dragging it into my text editor. We're basically just creating a bunch of files that we're going to need uh, in the game and if you don't understand them right now don't worry they'll all make total sense once we start using them and pro coding them lastly we're also going to create two separate scripts called app.js and main.js and when everything's created you can open all the files in your favorite text editor me personally i always use notepad plus plus all right so with the Phaser 3 framework, we can create HTML5 games, we can create mobile optimized games, and then we can use the web format of the game and port it to Android and iOS. But for starters, we are focusing purely on the web version of the game, and for that we need to create an index.html file. Our game is called Endless Cave, which is what I'm putting in the title, and also if you need it on your own web pages, you can add the HTML5 tag to the title and it's gonna help a bit with the Google rankings. But what we really need this index file for is we need it to include all the JavaScript files that we've just created. For example, we, we will need to include the libraries such as the phaser framework and we also need to include all the other game files that we've created. Right now it's just a bare minimum, but as we continue programming the game, it's, there's going to be more and more files. Besides the phaser file, all these files are empty right now and we're going to start coding inside app.js. What we are coding here is basically like the on button for, for our game. So we are creating a very simple object where we can set some important properties such like the version of the game and if we're currently running the game in a development environment. And then actually this object has just one method, the start method, and this is where we turn on the game and run it inside our index.html file. To create a phaser game, we need to set the scenes, we need to define the game configuration, and then finally we need to create the game app. And me personally, I also create some globals here that I want to be accessible throughout the game. And here is also where I toggle the sound. Scenes are very distinct parts or steps of the game. For example, the menu scene or there's going to be a game over scene. And for the phaser game, we are defining all the scenes in an array and then pass the array to the game configuration. Because we haven't set up any scenes yet, we're leaving the array empty for now. So let's look at our phaser game configuration. For type, we're setting it to auto. That means we let phaser choose if it wants to run the game in a 2D canvas or in WebGL. The parent is just the div container in the HTML file inside which the the canvas is going to be created. Then I also like to set some additional properties like the title, that's just the name of the game, then also the, the URL where the game is going to be hosted. In my case I'm going to host it on my website under Endless Cave. And then the width and the height of the game. That is actually the width and the height of the canvas. Now. If you choose 360 by 640, it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, number for mobile games that are going to be played in portrait mode. 
However, because I have designed all my tiles in uh, 16 by 60 tile sizes, I'm going to divide it by half. We're going to see later if we are going to double it or if we can leave it at 16 by 16. The advantage of 360 by 640 is that it scales really well on pretty much all devices. Let's begin coding the scenes so we can finally launch the phaser game for the first time. The very first scene that we're creating is the boot scene. This is the scene that starts the whole game. Just like you see here, we can create a new scene by extending the phaser scene class. For every new scene, we have to set a key, which is the scene's name. We also have to set the active status of the scene. For our boot scene, we set it to true, because that means when the game starts, this scene is already active from the very beginning. But for the other scenes, we're gonna set it to false. Every phaser 3 scene also has three methods. They're called init, preload and create. Uh, right now, all we do with the boot scene is as soon as it's created, it will start the preload scene. The preload scene is where we load all the game assets into the game. Every time you see a loading screen in a game, that is called a preload scene. We have to change the key to preload and make sure that it doesn't start as active. Also for the menu scene, we can copy paste the, the main structure, rename the key to menu, and just to have a visual proof that we've arrived in the menu scene, we're going to add a simple text that just says menu. Now that we have created all the scenes, we can add them to the scenes array inside app.js. Now we have everything that we need to configure and initialize the phaser game app. Just type new phaser.game and pass it the configuration object. As I have already mentioned earlier, at this point I like to set some global properties. These are values that I want to be accessible from every scene throughout the whole game. For example, I want to know if we're currently running the game inside the development environment and I would also like to know what's the current version of the game. Also, I want to save the width and the height of the game screen as well as the center coordinate on this game screen and the size in pixels of each individual tile. Now we're getting to the main.js script. This is where we actually run the app, where we run the game. So if we consider app.js as the button that starts the game, then main.js is the method that actually pushes the button. We create an app instance with new app, and then we start the game with app.start. And because we are creating a mobile game, we have to scale the game to the player's device. For this purpose, I have created a function called resize app. I use it in all of my games and I've written a blog post about it actually where I explain in more detail how this method works. You can just copy paste the whole function into your own game and it's gonna scale them just fine. You can find a link to my blog post with the code snippet in the description below. So now every time the browser window resizes, we're going to run the resize app function. And we're also running it on game launch. To make the resize app function work, we also need some custom CSS, which I'm copy pasting right here. All of this code you will also find in my blog post. Link is in the description below. All right, so when the browser loaded the whole page, we can start the whole game. For this game, we're using the JavaScript ES6 standard. So we're just gonna make a quick check that the browser actually supports it. And then we can finally launch the game. The first time when I ran this code, I actually forgot to include the phaser library. And in case you haven't downloaded the newest phaser version yet, you can get it right here from the phaser website. This link, I'll also put it in the description below. Next, there was a typo inside app.js where the sound on global property used a colon instead of a equal sign. And because I copy pasted the boot scene into the preload scene, the preload scene kept restarting itself. Very important you fix that, make sure the preload scene starts the menu scene once it's created. 
So nice the game is loading now and so that we can see it with our own eyes let's put the menu text in the center of the screen. This is where these center X and center Y values come in handy that we set up as global properties inside app.js. Anyways, we position the menu text in the center of the screen and we set the, the font color to black so we can see it on top of the white background. So that's it. You can see the game is running and it's running on the correct phaser version. Also, you see the title that we've set up. And I mean, this might look like a lot of work just setting up the structure, but actually we've done a lot. We have a system in place so we can keep adding scenes and prefabs and load them into the game. And most importantly, our game is already scaling for mobile devices. And now we can start creating some game logic and interactions. If you are one of my backers on Patreon, you can download the full source code from there. And if you want to see a written summary of this episode, check my dev blog. As always, please like the video, subscribe to my channel, and please let me know in the comments if you have any feedback on how I can improve the future episodes in this series. Thank you for watching and see you next time.